Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Beauty Tribe, released in the year 2018. At the beginning of the film, we're introduced to a man named Min. He is a proud womanizer and is having an affair with more than five women at the same time. Currently, he's telling one of his girlfriends how much he loves her and the lengths he would go to make her feel special. The naive girl falls for his sweet words, unaware that he says the same thing to every woman he meets. As they make out, Min gets a call from another one of his girlfriends, but he's used to being in such situations. Instead of panicking, he pretends to be talking to his grandmother and fools both women. After the call, the couple continues having fun. Some time later, Min gets bored and says that he has to be somewhere else for work. He asks the girls for money and pockets a glow-in-the-dark contraceptive before making his way to the second woman's house. It's already dark when he reaches the place. At first, he thinks she's not home because no one answers the door. But then, the door opens on its own. Min thinks it's creepy, but driven by his manly urges, he takes the risk and walks inside. Soon, he's met with relief when his girlfriend appears in front of him in a seductive lingerie set. Min is excited, assuming that she's going to put up a performance for him. But when the girl gets a chance, she hits him with a baseball bat, knocking him out in an instant. Min regains consciousness to see that he's in the middle of the desert, stripped down to his underwear. Confused, he looks for his phone, but only finds the glow-in-the-dark contraceptive in his pocket. Alongside it is a picture of all his girlfriends together. It is then revealed that all of his girlfriends know each other. A few days ago, they met for lunch at a restaurant. To their surprise, all of them had gotten into a relationship over the past few months, and all their boyfriends were the man of their dreams. But upon looking at the pictures, they found out that they'd been sharing the same boyfriend. The women were not going to let this slide easily, hence they took turns with him and devised a plan to teach him a lesson. Min jumps in frustration and assaults their group picture. For the next few hours, he looks for an end to the desert, but to no success. He's so exhausted that he mistakes sand for water and eats it. Suddenly, he's approached by a group of tribal women. The leader of the group is a woman named Talia. Since they keep staring at Min, he assumes they want to get intimate with him. He excitedly comes forward and takes Talia's veil off. This results in one of the girls knocking him out and dragging him into the village. The women belong to a tribe called Haliba, a unique group where the only people allowed to have rights are women. Men are treated as slaves whose only purpose in life is to serve women and pleasure them. On some occasions, men are even eaten as a nutritious source of food. On the way to the village, Min comes across a little girl named Dolly. The girl is kind enough to offer him water, but then she mocks him by pouring it onto the ground. Dolly also owns a pet human who acts on her wishes mostly cosplaying as a dog. Min is imprisoned in a tiny cage. With him, many other men are being kept in the same condition. He spends a few more days in misery, until one afternoon when he's approached by a man who seems more civilized than the others. His name is Zheng, and he's an archaeologist who came to the deserts for research with a team of scientists. However, they were caught and killed by the Haliba women. Zheng is the only person left from his group because he was bought by the tribe's priest, Hila. The professor also reveals that later at night, a festival is about to take place, where some of the chosen men will be sacrificed. When the night comes, Min makes funny faces to avoid being selected, but the women are not fooled by his tactics. He, alongside other men, are dragged to the stage. The spiritual leader Hila dances to traditional folklore before pulling out a dagger and cutting off the first man's genitals. Only then does Min realize that the sacrifice doesn't mean he will be killed. In fact, he will be sterilized in the worst way possible. He dreadfully accepts his fate and waits for the dagger to hit. However, as soon as his garment is pulled down, everyone goes silent. All eyes are on him, shocked at the size of his appendage. According to their tradition, a man with such an appendage must be the queen's escort. He is the first man to be found who fits the criteria. Because of this, he is saved and asked to please the queen for the night. Later, he's forcefully sent to Talia's room. She makes him choose an intimate toy from her collection. After days of suffering, Min is finally excited about something. However, it doesn't last long as he finds out that the woman gets to use the instrument on him. The following day, Min can barely walk. 
The night of romance was not what he thought it would be. Professor Zhang sympathizes with him and takes him to Hila. She looks into his future and sees something that makes her go silent. Min also finds out that if he's unable to impregnate Talia in three months, he will be punished. But if he is successful and Talia gives birth to his child, he will be killed. There is no way he can win and return to the life he used to live. That day, he also notices men being traded for mere vegetables. They're nothing but objects to the ruthless women. The women even fight and kill for a healthy man, but treat them like trash when they get a slave. For breakfast, they're given leftover food from yesterday. Over the meal, Min conspires to run away from the clan now that he's not confined in the prison. For this, the first step would be to gain the women's trust. Min has a charm that is irresistible to women, so he's confident the mission will be successful. In the following scene, the commander of the clan walks up to Talia. She's worried about a rival clan named Taizda that has been slowly approaching their village. Long ago, the clans made a treaty to live in peace, so Talia is confident that the rivals won't attack. But as a precaution, she sends some troops to the village's border. At night, Min massages her feet, showing her a new form of pleasure. Taking the opportunity, he also reveals that he wants to open a beauty shop for the women of Haliba. In a moment of weakness, Talia allows it, unaware that by using the shop, Min plans to gain women's support. The next day, he and the professor renovate an old building and establish their shop. The first person to come to the shop is the least attractive woman in the village. They give her a nice haircut and cure her acne in a day. On seeing the changes in her, other women swarm the store, demanding to get a makeover. As time goes by, Min becomes more and more popular among the ladies. With the money he earned, he cooks dinner for Talia in an attempt to impress her. He tells her how much he likes her, as he used to do with the women back home. However, the leader is not someone who's fooled so easily. She asks him to stay away, reminding him that he's just a mere man in the women's world. All of a sudden, a woman rushes to Talia, informing her that the little girl, Dolly, fell into the well. The women were able to bring her out, but she's still unconscious and on the verge of death. Talia and Min quickly rush to the scene. The tribe doesn't know how to save the girl, but Min has the knowledge of the outside world. He holds her upside down, causing her to vomit water and regain consciousness. The simple act makes him the hero of the town. A while later, everyone disperses. Talia invites Min to her bed, and the two spend the night together. The next morning, Min is treated like no other man has ever been. For the first time in their lives, the women respect someone other than their own kind. In the next council meeting, Talia and her people discuss the decrease in food and supplies. Some women claim that this is because the beauty shop is distracting the people from working and making them lazy. Suddenly, they're interrupted by the commander, who informs them that the enemy tribe Taizda is coming to invade their village. Talia and the troops immediately make their way to the border to stop the enemies. Somewhere else, the cruel leader of Taizda is organizing a death fight among his own people. Even though the fighters do not want to kill, he forces them to do so. Then, in the village, we see Dolly's slave putting poison into the well. He turns out to be a spy from the rival gang. At the same time, the professor and Min are discussing how they should escape the next day when the tribe is busy fighting. In the following scene, Talia with her soldiers and Min are on their journey to the border. Suddenly, the rivals attack and take the women by surprise. Most of Talia's people are killed while the others escape. Min and Talia are able to hide under a hill. They stay there for the rest of the night, talking about different things. Talia tells Min the story about the clans and their history. Long ago lived seven rival tribes consisting of Haliba, Taizda, and five more. They killed each other, looted the poor, and destroyed the resources of the beautiful land, transforming it into a desert. In the time of emergency came a man named Osa, who rode a white horse. He made the Osa Pact that required the clans to live in peace and harmony. For hundreds of years they obeyed the law, but Taizda has broken it with yesterday's attack. After Talia is done telling the story, she notices fireflies flying around. Min impresses her by blowing up the glow-in-the-dark asset he had brought from the city. The following morning, they return to the village to find it in chaos. Everyone is sick because of the contaminated water. The professor arrives and asks Min why he ditched the plan to run away. Talia figures out he was planning to betray them and is furious. 
Still, she feels some type of way for Min and cannot see him die. So instead, she exiles him from the village, letting him return to his old life. A while later, Min and the professor are returning home. Min feels like he's betraying the tribe by running away when they need him. The professor calls him foolish, but Min has made up his mind. He ditches the plan for the second time and runs back to the village. In his absence, the Taizda clan attacks the Haliba and takes all the women hostage. The women try to fight back with all their might, but are too sick to compete. Just when the clan is about to give up, Min arrives on a white horse as Osa did several years ago. He challenges the leader of Taizda to a fight. Because it's a matter of his pride, the leader accepts and gets ready to kill. The match starts, and at first, Min is overpowered. However, in the end, he manages to turn the fight around and become the victor. The leader's death marks Haliba's victory and the enemy troops return home. A few months later, everyone in the tribe is celebrating Talia's pregnancy. In a comedic follow-up, Min is standing on the stage, ready to be sacrificed for impregnating the leader. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.